you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stamp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stamp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it. To our broadcast today, and uh, our series continues. Our series about the best you can be continues. And uh, today's lesson is a very good one, and it's, it's lesson number seven, and is uh, talking about uh, a loving woman. Yesterday we had a very nice lesson talking about uh, a happy woman, but today we are talking about a loving woman. A loving woman, welcome. Welcome to our broadcast today, and uh, we have started it earlier a bit because of uh, circumstances that uh, uh, couldn't allow us to start late. So I welcome you wherever you are, and uh, we'll be doing it from a very, very beautiful garden, and I welcome you to be able to enjoy uh, this live broadcast uh, this day. A loving woman. A loving woman is our topic today, and uh, we shall be reading from the book of Matthew chapter 5, chapter 5 verse 15. Matthew chapter 5, verses 15 and 16, which says, And people don't hide a light, and people don't hide a light. You should be a light for other people. Live so that they will see the good things you do, and will praise your heavenly Father in heaven. Live so that they will see the good things you do, and will praise your heavenly Father in heaven. A loving woman. A loving woman, that is our topic today, a loving woman. And I welcome you, wherever you are, to join uh, this uh, uh, series today. And as I said, it's a 12-lesson 12 12 series, series, and we started, and this is our seventh lesson today. Uh, we are doing our seventh lesson since we started our 12-lesson uh, series about the best you can be. There are many stories told of people who come to know and love Jesus Christ. People who loved Jesus Christ, who knew Jesus and loved him because of the kindness and love shown to them in a time of need. Strangers to a new country need love. Sick neighbors need love. Struggling families need love. Widows need love. Young people and children need loving and attentive mature people in their lives. We all need love. There are many categories of lonely or sad people who need loving friendship, and you might be the person who can show them love. And I say that the topic today is a loving woman. Uh, you can be one of them. Loving, kind, and compassionate people draw others to Jesus Christ. Truly caring for others is the best and easiest way to win people for Christ and the, the, the heavenly kingdom. If you want to win people to the heavenly kingdom, the best way, the easiest way is to show love, kindness, and compassion. To be compassionate, to be lovely, 
to be kind to people, you can draw many to Jesus Christ because Christ himself and God himself is love. A loving woman. A young woman who had arrived in a new country. She was very lonely. She was afraid. She found a job working for a Christian family. They loved her. They provided for her. And they demonstrated God's love. They gave her a Bible to read in her own language. As she read the Bible, she said, the story of Jesus is so beautiful, beautiful than this garden, than these flowers you can see behind me. Because of this family's love, she became a Christian. This lady became a Christian because of the love this family, this employer showed uh, to her. So you can show love to anybody, even your employees, and you can change things. The Bible says, men do not light a lamp. You don't light a lamp and hide it and put it under the basket. No. They, but they put it on a table so that it gives light to all in the house. Let your light shine in front of men. Then they will see the good things you do and will honor your father who is in heaven. That's Matthew chapter 5, verse 15 and 16. That let us light, let us put our light on the table. Let us shine in front of people. Let our actions, let our acts, let our, our, our moves, let our character uh, be like a light unto the men. It can, when I'm talking of men, I'm, talking of, I'm not talking about male. I'm talking about people. In this context, men or a man stands for people. So the Bible is telling us that let us light the light. Let us light our light and put it in front of people so that people can see. So that men can see. So that people can see. And they honor God who is in heaven. It can be our goal. It can be our goal. To be the woman. It can be your goal to be a woman who is so loving, so compassionate that others will draw to Jesus Christ. How can you communicate that love? Now, how can you make this happen? How can you make this a reality? How can you communicate this love? Let us look at it now. Three ways love listens. If you read James chapter 1 verse 19, it says, Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak. Speaking is one way, speaking is one way of showing love. Most of us share, most of us use not, uh, most of us are not very good listeners. That is a problem. We can learn how to listen. Many of us are good speakers, but we are not good listeners. But we can learn how to be good listeners, to listen well. How can we do it? How can you be a good listener? Number one, body language. Experts say that 90% of our communication is through body language. We often say our one thing but mean the other. We often say one thing but mean another. And our body language shows it. A good listener faces the person who is speaking. She maintains an open posture with arms and legs and crossed. She leans forward slightly and maintains eye contact at the level of the other person. You have to be at the same level with the one person that you're listening to, a good listener. And I know you can make it. I know you can do it. You can be a good listener. Number two, open questions. The question which will accomplish it more than closed questions. Open questions ask for reasons, opinions, thoughts, feelings, and explanations. They allow the person to share while you listen. By contrast, Closed questions ask for facts and require a merely yes or no answer. They stop people from talking. So when you want to communicate well with people in a loving way, don't ask closed questions. Introduce open-ended questions so that people can discuss. They can, uh, they can give their reasons and opinions. They can give their feelings, their thoughts. Instead of asking the closed question where somebody has just said yes or no. Number three. Reflective listening. I said there are three ways, and the third one is reflective listening. Often the one speaks has an idea or, and tries to express it, but it may not always come out right. The reflective listener will check back to make sure for example, I hear you saying and waits to see what response comes. Love listens 
hearing not only the words but the feeling behind the words. Love takes time to check if the message received is the one given. Reflective listening. I'm talking about the art of listening. Many women don't listen. They talk, talk, talk the whole day. They talk, talk the whole night. They don't even give the other people to, uh, to, to speak. They don't listen to them. Do you listen to your husband? Do you listen to your fellow women? Do you listen to counsel? Or you keep talking and talking and talking? The art of listening. Consider the Bible story of a woman taken into adultery. If you read John chapter 8, verses 1 to 11, it talks of a woman who was found in adultery. That's what was Mary Magdalene. Love was demonstrated in the way Jesus dealt with this woman. The Pharisees came scolding, condemning, punishing, blaming, shaming. Jesus communicated love. He accepted and forgave her. He treated her with dignity and respect. He gave her courage. What about you? Do you listen? Do you encourage or you condemn others? You punish, you blame, or you shame others? Do you listen to them? Do you show love the way Jesus Christ showed show love to this woman who had been condemned? Three roadblocks to effectively. What blocks effective listening? There are three things that block effective listening that make us know to listen properly. Number one, what is a roadblock to effective listening? Number one, is judging. This includes criticizing, blaming, shaming, labeling people, naming, name calling. Jesus said, judge not. When you read Matthew chapter 7, verse 1, it tells us to judge not. So judging other people stops us from effective listening. It will not make you to listen to the person effectively because you have already preconceived ideas. You have already judged the person. You are blaming the person. You are shaming. You are labeling them. You are calling them names. Number two, sending solutions. This includes ordering, commanding, demanding, preaching, moralizing, advising. There are people who are just there to order others, to command, to demand, to lecture, to preach, to advise, but they cannot listen to get advice from other people. They are not giving other people a chance to be able to hear from them. Sending solutions. Number three, avoiding the other, concern, other person's concerns. You dodge. There are people who avoid the other people's concerns. They don't want to be concerned about the other people's side of the story. They include, this includes diversion. They divert. They distract. They argue. Reassuring and changing the subject. We are talking about something, they just change the subject, they write the story, and that is it. That one is a blockage to effective listening. Love is vulnerable. My listener, Jesus gave up his high position to come and be as we are. He became approachable and thus opened himself to attack. He made him able to to be hurt and rejected. Love strips away our pride and makes us approachable and you, 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 with, with a lot of humility. It humbles us and it makes us willing to show our humanity. That's what Jesus did. Jesus Christ left all the honor in heaven, all the glory, and came down humbled and he became vulnerable to attack. So when you are a loving person, many times you will be attacked. Many times people will scold you. Many times people will attack you. People will ridicule you because they know you are a loving person. Love encourages. Let us encourage one another because Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 tells us to do that. Voicing our appreciation is the most effective way to encourage someone. It is simply doing what God did for his son at the Jordan River. When God said, this is the son whom I'm, my beloved son whom I rejoice in. If you read Mark chapter 1 verse 11 after he was being baptized. Think of a time when you were encouraged by someone in your family, church or community, and how he helped you or she helped you. Think of a time when someone showed you true love, acceptance, compassion, care, and a listening ear. How did you feel? How did this affect you? Let us be wherever we are. Let us be like Jesus. Let us be like Jesus who is loving. Let us be loving people. Let us be loving women to our families, to our husbands, uh, to our neighbors. Uh, to our friends, to our workmates. Let us be our loving, let us be loving people. I'm say, I said our topic today is a loving woman. 
So we are talking about love and how a loving woman helps a good listener. She should be a good listener. You should be able to demonstrate that uh, in action. And there are a few things that I want to mention here. Uh, create an alphabet of love. I want you to create an alphabet of love and you write beside each letter a description of what love is. That's what I want you to do. A, affirming. B, beautiful. C, caring. A, B, C of love is affirming, beautiful, and caring. And so on through the alphabet. As you complete this lesson, think about your activities as a Christian woman. I want to, you to reflect about yourself. Do you radiate love and happiness that Jesus gives to you? Are you able to share this with others? Can you find ways to do this, to show love? Ask the Lord to help you become a more loving and compassionate Christian. What is our success principle today? I always give one principle, success principle, after every lesson. And even today, I have it. Today, our success principle is love. Because we are talking about a loving woman. Our success principle is love. Love. Can you write love downwards? Then, then besides each letter, I want you to write the following words. On the word love. Love. L, in front of L, you can write listening. That's what we have been talking about. In front of the word, the O, write overcoming roadblocks. The roadblocks that I mentioned before. Besides the letter V, write vulnerable. Vulnerability. Because when you are a loving person, you are vulnerable to attack, to abuse, and etc. And besides letter E, write encouragement. A loving woman encourages others is an encouragement to, the, to many people. Success principle today is love. Love is listening, overcoming roadblocks, vulnerability, encouragement. So that is what we wanted to look at today. And that is our success principle today. Our lesson today was a loving woman, I hope. From now henceforth, you will be a loving woman to your family, to your husband, to your children, to your neighbors, to your workmates, etc., and the whole uh, of the community. And uh, that's my humble prayer that I want to pray God, our gracious and loving God, to be able to show, to help us to show love to other people, and uh, to help to help us to be able to show love to other people. And that is our prayer today. Let us pray. Our gracious master in heaven, we pray that you help us as women to be able to be loving to our uh, couples, to our husband, to our children, to our neighbors, to our workmates, and everywhere we are, because you yourself you are love. Because you are full of love, you show it through sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. Help us to be able to be loving to others, and so that you can be able to draw many to, our, to you, so that you can be able to light as a light that is put, so that people can, see, can get the light. Not the light that is hidden. Let our actions be seen by many. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. I thank you for joining us today. And I, I welcome you again tomorrow for another lesson. Because today was our seventh lesson. Tomorrow we shall have our eighth lesson uh, in our series. And our eighth lesson tomorrow will be an assertive woman. Who is an assertive woman? An assertive woman. Don't miss tomorrow. Welcome tomorrow uh, to be with us. And you can also share this unto your old, uh, timeline through by hosting a watch party so that many can also be able to join. Welcome. Thank you, Caroline, for watching. And the rest, I can see you. Thank you so much for joining us today. God bless all of you. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Happy and you know it turn around If you're happy